Hi everyone, wanted to do a quick video here to kind of show something that I found out over the holidays that I thought was pretty fun, which is the difference between a real dark sky site and your home backyard if you're under heavy light pollution like I am. Um, you know, for anyone that, that's been looking at other videos on my channel, this image is one that I used in my how to take, uh, you know, vid, uh, good pictures in uh, light pollution areas. And, you know, I'm still super proud of this image, uh, but I had an opportunity over the ho recent holidays to go out to my club's dark sky site in Oklahoma. Um, and I took the same gear out there and uh, in some cases shot some of the same targets that I've been shooting recently. Um, and I was just really impressed with the results there and wanted to kind of talk about, uh, you know, why you, you may be seeing a difference. So first of all, Horsehead Nebula, you know, when I went up there to take that I did the same kind of exposure time, five minute exposures. Uh, difference is this is about five hours versus what I was able to get in about 55 minutes worth of exposure, which is this. Uh, now, it's a pretty big difference, right? Uh, lots of color differences. This is mostly very red, a uh, little bit of greens and blues in here, that kind of thing. Uh, and this one has a much, much richer variety of colors. You know, no filters on this camera. Same camera between the two of them. Uh, but the filters on the first one, a narrow band or a dual narrow band filter, uh, really looking for hydrogen, oxygen, sulfur, you know, kind of emissions uh, in a very narrow spectrum. So you get very, very specific kinds of colors uh, coming off of this that you're dealing with versus the full spectrum of colors when you're looking at this. Now this may look a little bit kind of grayish, not really dark back here, and that's because you got a lot more dust too. There's a lot more that I was able to pick out that isn't these emission nebulas that are glowing in a very specific color. Um, so, you know, wow, what a difference that makes, you know, especially when I think about this was four or five hours worth of exposure, this was under an hour uh, worth of exposure. Could I have gotten more? Certainly. Uh, but I also wanted to look at other targets. So, you know, looking at um, the other targets that I had here, you know, I've got, this is what the Orion Nebula looked like in my backyard. You know, I'm still pretty proud of this shot, although my focus could have been tighter and things like that. But at the dark site, let me get over to it, I was able to get this shot. You know, still a lot, you know, I would say I've got more dust kind of in this shot than I did in the other one, but still you know both very good detailed shots but the color difference is really what comes out um you know i think these were both you know an hour maybe maybe an hour and a half of total exposures um, but just so much color and detail in these so obviously you should always go to a dark site right well yeah if you live in a dark site take your photos there you're gonna get great photos but most of us don't right so you know, can you still take really good photos without it sure you know, looking at this, this is uh, only a couple minutes of total exposure time of the North American Nebula uh, with that, that dual narrowband filter under high gain. And you can still see I've got a ton of depth in here. And even looking at the horse head, look at all this detail that I'm getting in that nebula. You know, when you look at my full color from the dark site, I don't actually have as much of that detail, right? You know, putting that filter in front really does allow for greater contrast and detail in what you're looking at, uh, which, you know, can be helpful. But also look for the right targets, right? This is a very hydrogen-focused nebula. This dust is not, right? So it doesn't show up anywhere near as much. So look for your targets. You know, go to Google. Look for hydrogen alpha nebulas. See the ones that tend to show up really well. You know, that kind of thing. For example, this is the Rosette Nebula down here. Um, well, I've got one of those that I took with that from the backyard. And boy, that just looks great. You know, this nebula doesn't have a lot of blue in it, right? It's mainly hydrogen. You know, take a look online at different targets you're thinking about at the pictures that have been taken. If it's mainly kind of orangey red, then this is going to be a great target from the backyard with uh, a hydrogen alpha or a dual narrow band uh, kind of filter on your color camera. Um, let me see. And so, you know, at the end of the day, what should you do if you can do both? Well, I recommend you do both, right? I love this photo still. It's great. I, I love how it's, it just looks like a neon sign uh, for the horse head. 
uh, and the detail is so sharp on that. Uh, at the same point in time, man, I love the colors in here. I love both photos. In some cases, you can combine both photos together. I haven't really gotten into that too much yet. But for me, it's a whole lot easier a lot of times to say, I'm going to take my telescope out into the backyard, set it up, and start working on this uh, in a little bit of narrow band. Or even if I'm taking a, a wider band target, just more time. Because it's, it's 10 feet out my back door, and I can actually control all of it from my iPad sitting on the couch, uh, even when it's freezing outside. When I'm at the Dark Sky site, you know, I may be controlling it all with my laptop, but I'm still kind of sitting right there, and it's still pretty cold. Um, so... You know, but at the same point in time, I can take these pretty quickly. I can take a lot of images. I can look at several targets. So you got to weigh both of those going back and forth. I encourage you to go to a dark sky site if you haven't, uh, just to take a few images. They don't have to be super long. They don't have to be something where you're only looking at one thing in the night. I think I took seven or eight targets total. Some of them came out better than others, uh, but the ones that came out, I was super, super happy with. Um, you know, do that. You know, do a little little evening trip or a weekend trip. Try that at some point. And then when you come back to this, you'll know how much more you've got in here and what you can look at as your next steps uh, to get through that. Maybe, uh, you know, if you're using just a hydrogen alpha filter, maybe, uh, you know, going to a dual narrow band or maybe just layering in full color data uh, and just more of it to get more of the colors, the natural colors to come out, things like that. Uh, that'll start driving you a little bit further in the hobby uh, to getting images that you're happier and happier with over time. And never think that you're done uh, in this hobby. It's, it's, you know, if you're happy with your images, that's, that's perfect. Uh, but there's always more you can do. There's always a next level that you can go to. Sometimes that involves driving out somewhere. Uh, and sometimes that involves just taking a few more pictures or figuring out the next trick. Uh, sometimes, yes, it involves buying more gear, uh, but you know, see what you can do just playing around with what you have and where you are, uh, and I think you'll find that there's a lot out there that you can get um, going forward. But I thought that was interesting, uh, comparing those, those images. Uh, I hope you did too. Uh, feel free to drop me a line, a question, comment, anything like that, uh, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.